Good day, everyone. It's a beautiful winter day here in my part of Canada. Hope it's nice where you are, too. This is the next video in my series based on practical answers, which questions that I have had about the Bible. Today, I am looking at the question of, outside of the Bible, is there any historical evidence for the person of Jesus Christ? First, when I started this search, I figured I'd get maybe one or two or three references in history to Jesus Christ outside of religious and Bible writings. But man, was I wrong. I got a truckload. In fact, I've got so many, I don't know if I can squeeze them all into this short 10-minute video. But I'm going to try. Let's go. First one is by a Roman historian by the name of Cornelius Tacticus that was born somewhere between 52 and 55 A.D. Cornelius Tacticus lived during the reign of the infamous Nero and writes about Nero. He writes about, he also mentions Jesus, he mentions Christ, and the Christians. In his writing Annals, A-N-N-A-L-S, Tacticus makes reference to Nero and the fire of Rome and how Nero blamed it on the Christians. He makes mention of Christ's death under Pontius Pilate and makes mention to the large multitude of people that continue to to follow Christ, even unto their death. I'm going to quickly read just a part of what uh, Tacticus says here. Available to relieve Nero from the infamy of being believed to have ordered the fire of Rome, hence to suppress the rumor, Nero falsely charged the guilt and punished with the most extreme tortures the persons commonly called Christians, who were hated for their enormities. Christ, the founder of the name, was put to death by Pontius Pilate, the, cur the curator of Judea in the reign of Tiberius. Now, I could go on, but I'm moving on to the next one. To Tacticus proves to be one very important reference to Jesus Christ in the history, proven history, outside of the Bible. Another name that probably some, most people might be familiar with, if you're familiar with Christian history at all, or history in general, is Flavius Josephus, who was born around 37 AD. Flavius Josephus recorded a lot of Jewish history and how they were impacted by the Romans of his time. One of his more important and famous writings is a writing called The Jewish Antiquities, again, with his history of the Jews. I'm just going to read a short quotation from here. It, it's longer, but I'm shortening it and abbreviating it a little bit. Josephus writes, About this time appeared Jesus, a wise man, and he drew to himself many Jews. And when Pilate, after the denunciation of those that were foremost among us, had condemned him, Jesus, to the cross. And those who had first loved him did not abandon him, and the tribe of Christians named after him did not cease and are still here unto this day. Now Josephus wasn't a religious writer. He wasn't a Christian. He was a Jew, but he was interested more in the politics and the history of the Jews and the oppression under the Romans. But the fact that he mentions Jesus and mentions Christianity is the subject what I'm getting on here and that this is another solid reference from proven, recorded, non-religious history of mention of Jesus Christ and him being killed and the Christians that follow him, again, backing up the Bible. Josephus also makes mention in his writings about John, the brother of Christ, and how he was sentenced to be stoned to death. Moving quickly along, we've got another Roman writer. This guy was a governor. The name is Plinius Sidonius, also known as Pliny the Younger. Now, Pliny the Younger was governor of oh. Bithynia in Asia Minor around 112 AD. Pliny, along with a lot of the Roman governors in those days, was into the persecution and the suppression of Christians because of fear of their religion and of the movement that might overthrow the government. Pliny was writing a letter to another emperor known as Tarjan, T-A-R-J-A-N, seeking counsel on how to treat the Christians in his capture. In his letter, he talks about killing certain of the people. He talks about how Christians were in the habit of meeting once a week and singing praises and worship unto Christ and worshiping Christ as God, and that they also bound themselves with a solemn oath not to do any wicked deeds, even unto death, no adultery, not to falsify word or deny any trust. This is from Plinius's writing entitled Epistles, another historic writing and documentation of Jesus Christ and Christians and him being worshipped as God and Lord. Another record from history is a Roman historian by the name of Suetonius. He lived around 120 AD. 
Suetonius, in his writings, The Life of Claudius and the Lives of the Caesars, make mention of Christians in Rome and of, and of disturbances that the Jews were making because of Christ. And he also mentions Nero's punishment upon the Christians. Another uh, less flattering but nonetheless historical documented writing is by a writer by the name of Lucian of Samatosa, who wrote satirically about Christians and about Christ, alluding to Christ as the man who was crucified in Palestine because he introduced a new religion into the world that he calls a cult. Then he goes on to write, Furthermore, this first lawgiver, referring to Christ, persuaded them that they were all brothers, one of another, after they had transgressed once for all, by the denying of the Greek gods and by worshipping the crucified one himself. This particular writing by Lucian is in his writing known as the Passing Peregrinius. Moving right along, we got a fellow by the name of Tertullian, who was a Jewish theologist. He would lived around AD 197. He writes about an exchange between Tiberius and Pontius Pilate, arguing the divinity of the man Christ. Then there is Justin Martyr, who was born around 100 AD, and around 150 AD. He presented his writing called The Defense of Christianity to the Emperor Antonius Pius, referring to Pilate's report about Jesus. Now there's another writing that alludes to where the Gospels talk about when Jesus died, all the earth turned dark, probably a solar eclipse. And there's, another, there's a writing here that alludes that this solar eclipse or this darkness was probably a very widespread darkness. A Greek writer known as Philogon around 137 AD. He writes in his writings, he reported that in the fourth year of the 202nd Olympiad, which is the same date as 33 AD, or the same date when Jesus died, there was, quote, the greatest eclipse of the sun, and that it came night in the sixth hour, which is noon, of the day, even so that the stars appeared in the heavens, and there was a great earthquake over the earth, and in Bethnia, and in many things were overturned in Nicaea. Philogon's writings are quoted by another historian, second century historian known as Julius Africanus. Again, these things coincide perfectly with the Bible's rendition of the earthquake and the darkness that occurred after Jesus Christ was crucified. In the British Museum, there is an interesting manuscript of a letter known as the Letter of Marabar Serapion. Now, he was a Syrian and he wrote this letter around A.D. 73. In his letter, he's talking about how a lot of wise men throughout history up to that time have been killed by society and rulers. And in his letter, he mentions how that the Jewish officials of the day had Jesus killed. And Mara goes on to say, Nor did this wise king die for good, because his teachings live on in what he has given us. Then we have the Jewish Talmuds, which were a contemplation of Jewish history by Jewish historians and religious historians, com completed between the time frame of 100 to 500 AD. And in these Talmuds, they mention Jesus, calling him Yeshua of Nazareth, which is Jesus of Nazareth. And they talk about how Jesus was put to death. And they say, quote, Do you suppose that for Yeshua of Nazareth there was any right of appeal? For he was a begalier or this word is used in reference here to someone who deceives or uses sorcery. A quick reference here to Mark 3 verses 20 to 30 in which they accused Jesus of using sorcery and being of Satan as the reason why he could do miracles and signs and wonders. Okay, that was 10 sources from history, documented official sources from history outside of the Bible that I quoted from just in brief, that document Jesus Christ as a definite figure of history. From what I see, anyone who would actually claim that Jesus does not exist in history, outside of the Bible, uh, actually do so in total ignorance of what history actually says about Christ. It's like Rollin Professor F.F. Uh, F. Bruce of the University of Manchester once wrote, it says, some writers may toy with the fanciful Christ myth, but they do not do so on the grounds of historical evidence. There is probably more historical evidence for Christ than there is for Julius Caesar. It is definitely not historians who propagate Christ myth theories. 
These writings are some of what's out there. They've definitely helped to just affirm and solidify what I already know in my heart, and that is to the reality of the historical Jesus Christ. Talk to you later, folks. God bless.